fight for two U.S. Senate seats continues here in Georgia. Today, President Trump, Vice President Pence, and Vice President-elect, uh, uh, President-elect rather, Joe Biden, all plan to touch down in Georgia to give voters one last push to vote for their party candidates. CBS 46's Sabrina Silva joins us live in Atlanta. And Sabrina, these key supporters from Washington could play a big role in tomorrow's turnout. Oh, absolutely. And it's not surprising to see the president, vice president and president elect making stops here in Georgia. There is a lot at stake in this election, two Senate seats to be exact. So tomorrow's uh, election results could play a big role in what America could look like in the next couple of years. With just hours to go until Election Day in the Peach State Senate, candidates are making final pitches to voters. Senator Kelly Leffler spent her Sunday in Henry County. We got work to do. This is going to be a busy three days, okay, y'all? You just heard Christy. She told you what we need to do. We need to make sure everyone's turning out to vote. While John Ossoff and Reverend Raphael Warnock spent the day in Savannah campaigning with Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. It was, yes, certainly the voice of desperation. Most certainly that, and it was a bald, bald-faced, bold abuse of power by the President of the United States. And this Monday, candidates are getting one last push from Washington. President Trump will be holding a rally in Dalton, while Vice President Mike Pence will be stopping by in Milner to push voters to keep the Senate Republican, while President-elect Biden will be coming to Atlanta in the hopes the state will also vote blue during this runoff. According to the Secretary of State's office, so far more than 3 million people have already cast in their votes and more are expected to hit the polls in person on Tuesday. Now those polls will open up tomorrow at 7 in the morning and will stay open until 7 in the evening for folks looking to vote in person. Don't forget to bring your ID. But coming up in the next half hour, we're actually going to dig a little bit deeper as to why this election, election specifically is catching national attention. Live in Atlanta, I'm Sabrina Silva, CBS 46 News. Yeah, it certainly is. I have friends from all over the country who are texting me, paying attention to this Senate runoff who have nothing to do with Georgia. Sabrina, thanks for that report. President-elect Joe Biden's inaugural committee say there will be a virtual parade after Biden is sworn in to minimize crowds. The president-elect is urging people not to travel to D.C. and instead watch the event from home on January 20th. The televised virtual parade will also feature performances in communities across the country. Man, I tell you what, I have covered a, uh, I was there for Mr. Obama's first inauguration. It was so stinking cold. That's, that's all joking. I hear about that. Uh, oh, it was it, so uh, cold. The history is how freezing it, it was. It was unbelievable. <laughs> you I know what I learned too recently, actually from Rob, is that when people usually go to watch the ball drop in New York, uh-huh. you're so, you're surrounded by so many millions of people that you can't pee. So people will literally wear <laughs> diapers. <laughs> to watch the ball drop because there's no bathrooms? I don't know that I said anything about diapers. That, that I don't know anything about. Well, I looked about. into it after you told me about it, and I learned that people actually do. So, okay. It's not, okay, I'm sorry, but you're not going to have to wear a diaper out today. It's going to be cold, but, you know, at least we're all socially distancing, so you'll be able to find a bathroom. We are all back, door. aren't we? <laughs> Happy yeah, New Year, are. everybody. <laughs> Happy New Year. Some people wear diapers to watch the ball drop. Don't forget to change diaper today. Good morning to you in Marietta. It's 30 degrees this morning. Rob's laughing. He's walking off the set. 27 in Dallas. It is 31 degrees this morning in Conyers. So, yeah, it is cold. If you are getting back into the flow of work today, still working from home, probably not going to want to be outside for the first half of the day. Temperatures will be in the 30s and 40s, but by noon will be near 50 degrees. And with lots of sunshine, if you can find a spot in the sun today or take a call outside, that'll be a good idea. Temperatures today will top up slightly below, excuse me, slightly above average in the mid to even upper 50. So it'll be a nice day. It'll be a nice day tomorrow too, but we get some changes overnight. A very weak system move, so you can see increasing clouds overnight. This is at 4 a.m. Possibly a few showers, mostly in the mountains. Maybe a few sprinkles of mixed precipitation up into North Carolina. Most of us just see cloudy skies through the first half of the day and then clearing through tomorrow afternoon. So no big impact from the system. Again, tomorrow, maybe just a 10% chance of rain in those higher elevations. The real rain arrives Thursday and Friday. That's our next big system. I'll tell you exactly what that means for you when the rain 
moves in. Coming up first, though, we do need to check in on the roadways this morning. Rodney, sometimes the traffic's so bad. You need you a might, diaper, right? You might need a diaper. <laughs> you know? I'm trying to think. There is not a single situation that I want to see enough to where I would put on a diaper to wait yeah. outside. <laughs> I'm, I was really trying to think, Ella, but I cannot come across anything that that's important. Uh, good morning to you in Clayton County as you get your morning started. This is 75 at Forest Park where your traffic's starting to pick up here a little bit as you head toward Atlanta, but no major crashes to report. We'll keep you up to date on the roads and have more traffic and more on your forecast in less than 10 minutes. More than 350,000 people have died in the U.S. of the coronavirus. Just ahead this morning, why health experts say our country is lagging behind when it comes to vaccinations. Stimulus checks are already hitting some bank accounts, and that means scammers are on the hunt. Just ahead, the scams you need to watch out for as you wait for your check. Good morning to you. Lawrenceville, you're at 32 degrees this morning. Dallas sitting at 27. Conyers at 31. It is cold out there, but we are in for a beautiful day. I'll show you your hour by hour forecast coming up here in about four minutes. Today, city leaders in Kenosha, Wisconsin will vote on a resolution to issue an emergency declaration ahead of an ADA decision about the shooting of Jacob Blake. Kenosha police officer Rustin Chesky shot the 29 year old father in the back seven times, leaving him paralyzed. The district attorney is expected to make a decision on potential charges in the coming weeks, and the emergency declaration would allow the city to prepare for potential unrest. Meantime, the families of the victims who were shot and killed by armed protester Kyle Rittenhouse are filing a multi-million dollar lawsuit against the city of Kenosha. Rittenhouse killed two people and severely wounded another during a Black Lives Matter protest. The lawsuit asks for damages from the city, the county, the police department, as well as the sheriff's office.
On the third day of the new year, the coronavirus marked another tragic milestone, surpassing 350,000 deaths in the United States. And cases continue to go up here in Georgia, too. Georgia has reported more than 5,000 new cases in the past 24 hours. Nearly 10,000 Georgians have lost their lives. The race is on to end the pandemic with vaccinations across the globe. India's government is planning one of the most ambitious vaccination programs on Earth. The goal is to inoculate a million and a half people a day. Overnight, the first patient received the new AstraZeneca vaccine in the UK. More than a million people there have already had a shot of the Pfizer vaccine. And Israel says it wants to be the first country in the world to vaccinate every citizen by March. Okay, if you use direct deposit for tax returns, you should have access to the $600 stimulus payment today. Those payments are for Americans who made less than $75,000 in 2019. Checks went out in the mail last week. And now the Better Business Bureau is warning you to watch out for new scams. Experts say con artists are claiming you need to provide personal information to receive your stimulus check. That's not true. If you get a text, email, or robocall about your stimulus check, experts say ignore it. Remember, there is no processing fee to claim your stimulus payment. Now at 5, we're keeping an eye on today with some of the other stories you need to know. Atlanta police are searching for a person who opened fire on a crowd in Buckhead, injuring three adults. It happened early yesterday morning near Far Road and North Fulton Drive. Officers in the area arrived to find a woman who was shot in the leg and two men shot in the stomach. At last check, all three victims were in stable condition. If you have any information, please call Crime Stoppers. DeKalb County police are mourning the loss of a fellow officer following a crash. 44-year-old Sergeant Daniel Mobley was hit and killed while he was responding to an accident involving another officer on the downtown connector over the weekend. Sergeant Mobley was a 22-year veteran of the DeKalb County Police Department. He leaves behind a son. The DeKalb County School District starts phase one of its reopening plan today. Teachers will return to the classroom to teach virtually and students will return on January 19th. Some faculty and staff are protesting the decision, calling it dangerous as coronavirus cases surge statewide. Today, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is going to find out whether he'll be extradited from the UK to the United States to face espionage charges. Assange could be sentenced to 175 years in prison for publishing secret American military documents tied to the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. The mother of Assange's children is asking President Trump to grant him a pardon. The Falcons lost their last game of the season, 44-27 to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They end the season at 4-12, tied for their worst record since Arthur Blank bought the team in 2002. But there is some good news. The Falcons have officially secured a top-five pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. And the jackpots for both Mega Millions and Powerball are over $400 million to start this new year. Drawing for Mega Millions' top prize is tomorrow night with Powerballs on Wednesday. The odds of a single lotto ticket hitting is worse than one in $290 million. <laughs> okay. I said $290 million. That didn't make any sense. One in $290 million. People. It's a $400 million yeah. jackpot. What would you do if you won $400 million? I wouldn't come to work tomorrow. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, take us with you, Ella. I would be, I don't even know. Going and you would taking... financially support all of Wake Up Atlanta as well, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know what? We would just start our own show with everyone <laughs> doing whatever we wanted and it would air from the Bahamas. All right. Ooh. Good morning to you. I hope you are getting the year off started <laughs> on a good note. It was a very rainy first day of the year and then we had a couple of days in the upper 60s. I hope you took advantage of it. We are not going to see that warm weather this week. 30 degrees outside, but I want to note that the humidity is at 96%. Because of that, Moisture is probably condensing at the surface. What that means, we could see some patchy frost and also some patchy fog out there over the course of the next couple of hours. Visibility looks good, so there's no real fog out there now, but you may run so into some of it before sunrise this morning. We're going to be under clear skies today. It is going to be a gorgeous start to the week. Mostly sunny skies, a little bit of increasing clouds through the afternoon, but overall dominant sunshine. High temperatures today will reach the mid 50s, so a little bit above average. It'll feel nice outside this afternoon. Now, overnight tonight, we see increasing clouds. That's going to do a big 
uh, difference, I would say, for temperatures. Whereas we'll be in the 20s and 30s this morning. Tomorrow morning will be 10 degrees warmer, so it won't be nearly as cold to start off your Tuesday. The reason for that is this quick moving system that's going to push through. Here's a snapshot of tomorrow at this time, 5 a.m., mostly cloudy. You can see it's a moisture starved front, so the mountain's going to get some mixed precipitation, but most of us just see clouds in the morning with clearing skies in the afternoon, but it will be breezy tomorrow, so that will add a little bit to the chill factor. Temperatures still reach the low to mid 50s, but it will feel cooler outside with those clouds and the wind. Over the course of the next three days, we stay dry. We see temperatures in the 50s, but Thursday and Friday as our next system moves through, it's going to be what's called a cold core low. So it's going to be a chilly rain that pushes through. Not a complete washout, but through Thursday evening, overnight into Friday, that's when we see the rain. And as it's very cold, the mountains could see some mixed precipitation early on Friday morning. I know that we're still five days out from it, so it's something that we'll watch. But again, that's really our next big weather maker. Until then, it's going to be pretty calm outside. January is one of the wettest months for us here in Georgia, and we're not getting a lot of it this week, so that's something to be thankful for. Here's a look at the seven day forecast again. After tonight, it will be much warmer tomorrow morning, and then we see a big cool off as we head towards the middle to late week. Rodney. To you in Gwinnett County, we are on 85 this morning at Jimmy Carter. As you can see, it's a smooth start to your work week. The first work week of 2021, no crashes to report at the moment, but I am watching the roads and we'll have more on your traffic and your forecast coming up for you at 530. It is 521 this morning and we have a new warning for parents. Yes, just alarming new numbers about children and COVID-19. Plus, getting fit is one of the most common New Year's resolutions. Coming up, some helpful ways to help you hit your goal in 2021. Here's a look at what you can watch tonight on CBS 46. People at 7, followed by The Big Bang Theory, The Neighborhood, Bob Hart's Abishola, All Rise, Bull, and CBS 46 News at 11. Tonight's primetime lineup is brought to you by GEICO. Now offering an extra 15% credit on motorcycle insurance. Visit GEICO.com for more.
New this morning, children are not escaping the latest coronavirus surge in the U.S. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, as of December 24th, 2 million children had tested positive for COVID since the start of the pandemic, half of them since November 12th. All right, it's the beginning of the year, and if you're starting the year off with a list of fitness resolutions, don't let this pandemic stop you. Check out virtual workouts. There are even free videos on YouTube. You can also schedule a session with a personal trainer over Zoom, but experts say your health resolutions should go beyond just losing weight. Maybe your goals in the past had been building muscle or weight loss. Well, how about having an improved emotional state or feeling less stressed, more energized? Feeling like you're working out for other things than just your physical body is a huge trend. Experts also recommend heading outdoors for a quick walk or run to get some fresh air and clear your mind. Yep. <laughs> yep. Agreed. <laughs> it's 525 this morning. A political battle is brewing right here in Georgia. I think it's pretty clear that we won. We won very substantially, uh, Georgia. As the uh, president pressures our state's top election officials to flip the election in his favor. Democrats on Capitol Hill are asking for a criminal investigation. We're just one day away from election day and candidates continue to campaign why they're getting extra help from Washington coming up. Democrats are calling for a criminal investigation after a leaked phone call between President Trump and Georgia's Secretary of State goes viral. President Trump and President-elect Joe Biden are both set to pay visits to Georgia today to stump for the Senate candidates in our runoff elections. The effort to roll out the vaccine has been slower than expected. Now health experts have a plan to vaccinate twice as many Americans. A new year, but not a new reality just yet. Doctors expect the coronavirus pandemic to get worse before it gets better. One of the reasons how much Americans are traveling. This is CBS 46 News. Wake up Atlanta. 
Thanks for waking up early with us on this Monday morning. Many of you may have traveled over the uh, the holidays and back to reality today. <laughs> We're glad you're with us. It's Monday, January 4th. I'm Gravier Dinsa. And I'm Rob Hughes. We're not going to ease right into it. We have a lot of news to get yes. to. President Donald Trump in the last remaining days of his term continues to deny he lost Georgia in the 2020 election. Today, he'll hold a rally in Dalton for Republican Senators David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler. And President-elect Joe Biden is campaigning here in Atlanta for Democratic candidates John Ossoff and Reverend Raphael Warnock. We, of course, will continue our team coverage in just a few minutes. But first, meteorologist Ella Dorsey has Atlanta's most accurate forecast. And as your resident uh, frost in the windshield expert, yep. there was frost <laughs> on the windshield this morning, Ella. Rob always lets me know when there's frost on the windshields. <laughs> and yes, you might see some of that on your way into work or wherever you're headed this morning because it is very cold outside. In fact, much colder than yesterday. Good morning to you in Winder. It's 30 degrees, 32 in Norcross. It's 36 in Duluth. Forsyth County coming, sitting at 31. So most areas are at or below the freezing mark. Temperatures are anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees colder from yesterday morning. So you will feel the chill when you walk out the door as you get your morning started. You pour your bowl of cereal or if you're on the go, you grab your little perfect bar on the way out. Temperatures will be at or below freezing. Sunrise today is 15 minutes before 8 a.m. Here's the good news. We are going to see lots of sun today. Temperatures will climb into the mid 50s, so this afternoon will actually be really pleasant, but this pleasant weather, it isn't going to last all week. We got a lot we got to talk about. It's going to be cooler. It's going to be rainier. I'll break down exactly when that cooler, rainier weather arrives. Coming up here in about six minutes. First, though, it is time for a look at the roadways this morning. Roddy, how is it out there? Ella, so far, so good as you get your work. We started across Metro Atlanta. In fact, there's not a major crash to report at all on the interstate, at least at this point, which is certainly good news, but I am watching the roads and we'll have more on your traffic and your forecast coming up in less than 10 minutes. Rowdy, thanks. Just one day before Georgia's all important Senate runoffs, a political firestorm is brewing. It involves a leaked phone call between President Trump and Georgia's top election official. Our Rebecca Schramm is live at the state capitol for us this morning. And Rebecca, Democrats are calling for a criminal investigation into that telephone call. Yeah, for one, uh, Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois, Gravier and Rob, uh, says he believes that the president crossed the line pressuring Georgia's Secretary of State to overturn the results of the presidential election here in Georgia. We've got a couple of snippets for you so you can listen for yourself. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. CBS News obtained Saturday's hour-long recorded phone call between President Trump and Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. In it, the president tries to pressure Raffensperger to change the election outcome in Georgia. You should want to have an accurate election, and you're a Republican. We believe that we do have an accurate election. No, I no, you don't. No, no, you don't. You don't have, you don't have, not even close. Campaigning in Georgia for Democrats, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris said this. Have you all heard about that recorded conversation? Well, it was, yes, certainly the voice of desperation. Most certainly that. And it was a bald, bald-faced, bold, abuse of power by the president of the United States. Now, according to the head of Georgia's Republican Party, the president's attorneys are now suing the Georgia Secretary of State's office, saying that leaked phone call, that was supposed to be confidential settlement discussions. We're going to continue our live team coverage now 